Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 1 from IMO 1961. This problem was suggested by one of the users on my YouTube channel named Alex. So thank you for the suggestion. So the question uh, is asking us to solve a system of equations. It asks us to solve the system of equations x plus y plus c equals a, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals b squared, x y equals z squared, and a and b are real constants and they are asking us to also figure out for what conditions on a, b x, y, z would be distinct positive numbers. So since I am given the sum of x, y, z and their uh, sum of their squares and the product of x, y, z, that makes me think maybe I should find the product of x and y and I should find the sum of x and y and then write down a quadratic equation and then find x and y. So in other words, when you want to find two numbers x and y, you need to find their sum and their product. If you do that, then you can write in a quadratic t squared minus st plus p equals 0, and that would immediately give you x and y. So let's try to write down everything in terms of x plus y and x minus y. If you look at the second equation, you can complete the square, write it down as x plus y squared minus 2xy, and of course, X, uh, xy is equal to z squared, so if you plug that in, we get minus 2z squared plus z squared, and that gives us a difference of squares. Factoring that, we would get x plus y plus z times x plus y minus z is equal to b squared. Now, the first expression x plus y plus z is equal to a, so let's, that, let's sub that in. We get a parentheses x plus y minus c is equal to b squared. Now I would like to divide by a, which means I would have to take two cases, when a is 0 and when a is non-zero. So let, let's see what happens when a is 0. When a is 0, then b is also going to be 0 because 0 times x plus y minus c is going to be 0. And that means the second equation gives us x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 0, which means x, y, and z must all be 0. Now, when a is not 0, I can divide off by a, and that would give me x plus y minus c is equal to b squared over a. Let's summarize all of that. The first equation remains intact. The second equation was simplified to x plus y minus z is equal to b squared over a. Let's take the first and second equation, subtract them, we get 2z is equal to a minus b squared over a. Simplifying that, dividing by 2, we get a squared minus b squared over 2a, that is z. So we found our z. Now we're going to take the first and second equation, add them up, divide by 2, that gives us x plus y is equal to a plus b squared over 2 divided by 2, which is a squared plus b squared over 2a. And of course the third equation gives us x, y equals a squared minus b squared over 2a, all squared. So we achieved our goal of finding x plus y and finding x times y. Now we form the quadratic equation whose roots are x and y. We are going to look at the discriminant. Discriminant is going to be a squared plus b squared over 2a all squared minus 4 times a squared minus b squared over 2a all squared. We are going to see when this discriminant is in fact non-negative. So we're going to take the common denominator of 4a squared, then we factor this. This is the difference of squares. The numerator is the difference of squares. It would be a squared plus b squared minus 2a squared plus 2b squared, a squared plus b squared plus 2a squared minus 2b squared. Simplifying, we get that this discriminant is 3b squared minus a squared, parentheses 3a squared minus b squared. So let's see when that quantity is non-negative. For that to be non-negative, the numerator must be non-negative which means either both of those terms in the numerator must be positive or both are negative or zero. The first case gives us 3b squared is greater than or equal to a squared and 3a squared is greater than or equal to b squared. We can combine these two inequalities into 3b squared greater than or equal to a squared greater than or equal to b squared over 3. The second case tells us 3b squared is less than or equal to a squared and 3a squared is less than or equal to b squared. And that gives us 3a squared is less than or equal to b squared, which is less than or equal to a squared over 3, which means 3a squared is less than or equal to a squared over 3. But that's impossible unless a is 0, 
but that is a contradiction because we assumed a is non-zero. Now that we found out when there are roots for this equation, we can write down the roots. So the roots x and y are going to be, by the quadratic formula, are going to be these two expressions. And z from the first equation would be a minus x plus y. x plus y is a squared plus b squared over 2a. Simplifying that, we get a squared minus b squared over 2a. So to summarize, all of the solutions are this. If a and b are 0, then we have x and y and z are all 0. And if a is not 0, the condition that we need for it, for it to have solutions is going to be 3b squared greater than or equal to a squared greater than or equal to b squared over 3. And the roots are evaluated using these formulas. And z is a squared minus b squared over 2a. So we found all of the solutions. Now we will have to determine under what conditions the solutions are distinct and positive. So let's first look at the first equation, x plus y plus z. That must be positive if both, if all three solutions are positive. So that means A must be positive. Now let's look at Z because that was a little bit simpler to deal with. So that gives us A squared minus B squared over 2A. That must be positive, which means A squared must be greater than B squared since the denominator 2A is already positive. Now in order for the two roots X and Y to be real and dis distinct, the discriminant must be positive. We already found the condition for the discriminant to be positive. We will have to just drop the equalities because we don't want the discriminant to be zero. Otherwise, x and y would be the same. So the condition is 3b squared greater than a squared greater than b squared over 3. Combining that with a squared greater than b squared, we get 3b squared greater than a squared greater than b squared. Next, we will have to make sure that x and y are positive. We know they are two real roots of the equation, the quadratic equation. In order for them to be positive, their product and their sum must both be positive. Looking at the quadratic equation, we have a squared plus b squared over 2a must be positive. That's the sum of the two roots. And the product of the two roots is a squared minus b squared over 2a all squared. Both of these two are already satisfied because a is positive and a squared and b squared are not the same because a squared is more than b squared. So both of these two conditions are satisfied. So at this point what we know is z is positive, x and y are distinct, x and y are also positive. Let's see if z and x can be the same. We know that xy is equal to z squared. If z and x were the same, then y and z would be the same by dividing both sides of xy equals z squared by x we would get y equals z because x and z are the same, which means x and y are the same, and that is a contradiction. So to summarize, the solutions are distinct and positive if and only if a is positive and 3b squared is greater than a squared, greater than b squared. And this brings me to the end of this video. If you have any suggestions or any problems you want me to work on, feel free to send me an email at mathcompetitioncoach at gmail.com and if you like this video there are plenty other videos like this on my channel and I will see you in another video